Um, so last time, and this relates, we talked about this huge jump from 1400 to 1630 and how one of the biggest things to change uh, during that time was people's understanding of language. And we talked about how Latin uh, was really kind of what they call the death of Latin. It was no longer, or during this period, its, its power kind of waned and languages like English became more powerful during this exact same period. And we talked about why this was such a tremendous uh, transformation. Uh, for this period? Well, today we're going to talk about an even bigger change, a more fundamental change <coughs> that occurred during this time, and this is a basic uh, change in people's understanding of time, okay? Uh, you may want to take some notes here because this is going to, I think, help clarify some things. So we've had this, we had this incredible change in understanding of time and what time is and how people move through time. Now, in the readings that we've done so far, you've probably noticed that there have been a few references to time. Uh, in the Knight's Tale, uh, we had references to seven-year periods and one-year periods where the Knights go away or people are in prison. And in the Wife of Bath's uh, Tale, there's a one-year period. Does anybody remember what that's about, the one-year period? Who has one year to do what? Yeah. Right, the knight's given one year to go find out what it is that, that women really want. Um, and when we read Christopher Columbus's diary, we saw, we saw like December 21st, October, September, it all, it all looked pretty, uh, pretty, pretty familiar. But one of the things I want you to understand in this class is that, is that when, when these authors would have used these time periods, um, and when Christopher Columbus would have used these this time periods, uh, we look at those things and we make assumptions about what they're thinking. And the assumptions that we're going to make are, uh, are, are wrong. Um, when we see references to time, and I'm using we in a very general way here. This may not be you. If it's not, you know, I certainly apologize. Uh, we automatically presume the following. Um, that it relates to a system of years and days and you know, months or hours or seconds. That is kind of endlessly adding up. Okay, so right now uh, it is uh, 1.30, uh, and now it's 1.30, and soon it'll be 1.31, then it'll be 1.32, and we all pretty much assume that there will be a 6 o'clock tonight, and there will be an 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and that tomorrow is Saturday. And we, we assume that time keeps adding up, and it keeps going and going. Where does time stop? When we say it doesn't. Doesn't, when we say it does. Those two views are actually going to be very important today. Um, but we just kind of presume that time keeps going on. But we've developed, and you can use that clock, I think, is not to make you stare at the clock and torture you, but we've developed this time system um, uh, typically uh, for the purpose of making sense of our world, because our world is full of changes, changes to the weather, there's physical changes, there's chemical changes, there's biological changes, the sunrise, the sun sets, the moon moves, things change, and we have this system of numbers, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, that we use to make sense of the cycles and of when things occur in our world. Okay? So again, hours kind of carve up the day, uh, the days of the week kind of carve up when you work and when you rest for a lot of people. Uh, you can think of the minutes and the seconds as being things that we use to organize our own little personal daily activities. Uh, our time, what's called chronological time, and you should write it down that way, chronological time, okay? Uh, is a way to organize the universe. Um, it's a way to organize a universe that we have found out doesn't seem to have its own, uh, its, its own time system. So we kind of invented this time system to keep track of things. Um, and what's, all, what's so great about chronological time is that while we might not know why something happens, we always know when it happens. Okay, I may not know why there's a car accident, you know, why two cars crashed on the road on the way here this morning, but I know when it happened. It happened at, let's say, 8.31. Okay, um, so it's this really powerful thing that we've developed, um, and it, it's very useful because it allows us to figure out when things happen. And you might be like, yeah, well, that's done, of course, right? Well, think about this. Not only does it let us know when things happen, Okay? It lets us know how things, um, uh, how, uh, how or when things happened, how things are now, and how things may be in the future. Our chronological time lets us know, um, you know uh, that there was a past and when things occurred in the past. It lets us know where we are in the present, and it gives us a pretty good idea what the future is going to be like. Everyone in this room assumes there will be a Saturday. Okay? Everyone in this room assumes there will be a Sunday and a Monday. Okay? We all hope we're there to see it, um, but we have these assumptions. Um, and it helps us figure out things like birthdays, anniversaries, um, what we're going to do on the days of the week. 
All of this stuff may seem very obvious to you, but here's, here's the one I, what I want you to think about. This understanding of time would have made no sense to the authors we've been studying this semester. This understanding of time, of, of seconds and minutes and days and hours that are used exclusively to organize the universe and figure out when things happen wouldn't have made sense to the authors that we're studying. And that's really important for understanding this period and how things are going to change. They had time, I mean, to run the they have, and Oh, absolutely. They, they had time. They had calendars. And they had sundials. And they would have had timekeeping devices. But what's different, what's very different, is their understanding of, uh, of why we have time. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, why we have time. And as I just mentioned, uh, they, they, uh, we use time to chart these changes in the physical world. Um, these, these, uh, these, these authors that we're reading and the, and the people they were writing to um, had a very different understanding of time. They wouldn't have thought in terms of past, present, and future. You should write that down. You think in terms of past, present, and future probably. And it might be really hard for you to think of someone who doesn't. Because it's, it's almost like an alien way of thinking. Uh, and I use the alien in the outer space sense. Um, um, they would not have broken the world up into past, present, and future. That's a very uh, modern way of understanding the world. You've probably never heard this before. Okay, but you need to understand that to get a real good idea about what's going on. And I'll explain why they didn't think of past, future. Uh, past, present, and future. I'll put it up on the board too, so it's a little bit easier um, uh, to follow. Um, if I can just find it. Uh, okay, uh, a lot of the writers that we're studying would have believed that an unchanging God, okay, was the reason for time and everything that happens in the world. And if time is a representation of God and um, God never changes, then time never really changes at all. So there was no real reason for them to think of it as something that was constantly developing, which is what we do. Okay? If I was to ask a group of medieval Christians, the question I asked you a few minutes ago, when does time end, they would have said, does anybody think they can guess when it would, when it would end? Because it does end in the Bible. There's a point where it ends. When's it end? What? Well, the apocalypse, or with the, you know, with the second coming of Christ, or any of, these, any of these conditions, time as they understood it would have ended. So they had a finite understanding of time. And you may too, but I'm saying this was a very common view during the medieval period. Okay? Um, so if, there's no, if, if you're not worried about time progressing because you know where it's going to stop, there really is no need for a clock. Okay? Um, and what they were presuming intellectually and spiritually was actually born out in their lives. Remember how I said people during this period basically grew up, lived, and died in the same place? Okay. Well, if you grow up, live, and die in the same place, then you're a little bit less confused about time. If you grow up in an era when your life is expected to be exactly like your parents' life, okay, because people are born into stations in life, like how many of you think you can make your life better than it is right now? How many of you hope for change in the future? That's a very modern belief. It is not something people have always believed for a very long time. The presumption was you were born into a certain family, you lived a certain way, and you died a certain way. And it was always the same. And your children's life would be the same as your life was. Okay? And if you live that kind of life, there's a lot of questions you don't ask yourself. There's a lot of questions you don't need to ask yourself. Because you pretty much have the plan for yourself uh, by the time you're five or six years old. So for people in that situation, they really didn't need to make it dis any, distinct, uh, any distinguishing. They didn't need to distinguish between a past, present, and the future. Because the present was all there was. The present was all there was. Or that's what, they was, or that's what would have been presumed. However, what's happening during this reason? What was the reason why language began to change? That I told you last time. What was one of the reasons that we talked about? What's going on? English 